Hi there, my name is Dr. Kingsley Kunko. I'm a relationship coach and counselor. All right, so today, um, first of all, welcome to this YouTube channel. Uh, if you have not subscribed, please go subscribe immediately. Make sure you share this video, like, comment, and all the other ways you interact with us. Uh, don't forget, we have also have some other associated YouTube channels. Um, Mildred Kingsley Kunko is my wife's channel. LDM with PK is our official ministry channel. Loads of materials there also. Then we have Wholesome Sexuality, it's our channel on healthy sex coaching it'll bless you all right so today we're talking about how to know people better how to know people better and um why, why is this important why is it even a topic uh, the reason is because over the years of counseling um i've had to deal with a lot of people in crisis marriages in crisis relationships and one of the things they always um tell me is that oh i didn't know he was like this i didn't know she was like this and um, by the time I start to interview them and ask questions, we always discover that the red flags were always there. People really do not change so much, you know, uh, you know except they're intentional about it or there's an intervention. But not really. Um, the red flags people experience in marriage was available or was obvious even before marriage. We're either just sometimes blinded by love, too excited to notice, or we're just not knowledgeable, not skillful in recognizing the signs. So most times uh, the things that break a marriage were obvious even before the marriage started. So this is crucial and important because it will help you learn, you know, how to observe, how to know someone, you know, it's not, it's not just anybody that is interested in you, you should enter or start the journey of relationship with. All right. So that is, that is a major, major thing. A lot of the heartbreaks, a lot of the divorces, a lot of the things people encounter, you know, uh, the signs were there. The red flags were there. Some people just couldn't recognize them. And um, part of what we want to do today is to show you seven ways you can know people better. Um, there's a story about Jesus I would like to read to you. Um, I, and this is very helpful. It's in John chapter 2. John chapter 2 from verse 23. It says, Now while he was in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, many people saw the signs he was performing saw the miracles he was doing. He said, and they believed in his name. But the Bible now says that, but Jesus will not commit or, or entrust himself to them, for he knew all people. They say he will not entrust himself to them because he knew all people, all right? He knew how people can be. Let me read the TPT version of the scripture. It says, but Jesus did not entrust himself to them, because he knew how fickle human hearts can be. He needed no one to tell him about the human nature, for he fully understood what man was capable of doing. That's the busy version. Is that not amazing? See, he knew what man is capable of doing. So just because someone says, I love you, I love you, I love you, or I like you, or whatever it is, uh, you, it, it's, it's your duty to make sure you know them before you commit to them. And you know, I always say that in every other area of life, we actually do double check things. It's when it comes to love that most of us want to leap in. And I think it's because we, we, we create the idea of love is something we fall into. You know, we fall in love. So if people have not fallen, they don't feel it is love. So they want to fall. They just want to fall into it. No. When it comes to the, the school you put your kids in, you double check it. When it comes to the bank you put your money in, you double check it. You know, any, any sign of anything off, you know, it triggers you. When it comes to, you know, the, where you want to get a job, you, you double check everything. But when it comes to love, people just want to fall. They want to fall in love. <laughs> but Jesus said, you know, the Bible talks about Jesus that he, he, he didn't trust himself to them because he knew how people were. He was able to know. It's your duty, it's your own responsibility to double check um, the person you're about to um, start a journey of love or marriage with. All right, so we're going to give you seven points. They're easy, easy. Just take note of them and please apply them. And I know most times when people are in love, it's difficult for their mind to be in the right place, but... Is the, now, now is the best time to take note of these things and apply them. It will, it will make a world of difference. I tell people all the time that uh, my wife was the first person I ever um, entered a relationship with. First person I ever dated. You know, you don't have to do so much try and lock. People, people just hop in and hop out of relationships. So many exes. You know, we have 12 exes, 11 exes. I mean, they're just making the same bad decisions. You know, uh, you need to learn. You know, you, you don't have to do so much try and lock. And, and this exes now become, you have 12 people uh, uh, laying courses on you every day. <laughs> Or things like that. You have 12 people that can be a threat to your marriage tomorrow. Because many marriages that break, you hear that, oh, he spoke to his ex, his text his ex. These ex issues can become problem. 
All right, so these things will help you avoid a lot of drama and a lot of heartbreak. So there are seven points. I'm going to run through them as fast as possible. So number one, I tell people, if you want to know people better, check their actions. Just check them out. When you are with them, when you're talking with them, when you're relating with them, um, don't be quick to tell them what you, what you want them to be. That's a mistake people make. They just say somebody that says, oh, I like a girl that can laugh. No, 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 no. Just let them be themselves. I always tell people, that's why friendship is important. The season of friendship or the talking stage, as people call it nowadays, and most people are impatient with that stage, but that's a very important stage. Just let them be themselves. Don't try to impose what you think they should be. Observe. Do more observing, you know, at that beginning stage. Watch their actions. What controls them? What motivates them? Why do they do what they do? You know, I, 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 the more I hang out with people, I find that most people are not good at listening. Most people like to talk. When I'm with people, I already know what I want to say. I'm more curious about what you want to say. So I'm watching you. I'm asking questions. When you say, oh, I want to go to the, to the market today, I'm saying, why? I want, to, I want to go and play football, I'll say, why? I want to know your why. I want to know what motivates your action. I'm not just moved by your action. I'm moved by what is, motiv- what is informing that action. If I know what's informing your action, it's easy to find your motive and where your heart is. So, hey, if you meet someone, find out what, what is the center of their life. Do they make their decisions based on sentiments or on proper you know, structure, reasoning structure? Do they make their decisions on sentiments or scriptures? Are they, are they ruled by culture or, or what the word of God says, for instance? If you're a Christian, that is a big deal. You know, I, I have to know what controls you. Do you say, oh, I, I'm going to do this thing because I'm a Bini man, because I'm an Igbo man, because I'm, a, I'm, I'm an Indian, because I'm a, I'm a British, a British person. You know, is that the reason why you do something? You know, I, for, for me as a believer, um, um, what I'm looking out for is, is God ruling your life the way he's ruling my life? Do you do the things you do because it, it will please God? You know, I don't follow, I, I, I'm not impressed if somebody's doing something because it's their personal decision. You see, their personal decision can change. I'm looking at, is there a higher reason why you do what you do? So look at, just so observe, just watch. The Bible says, by their fruits, you shall know them. So the Bible wants you to know people. It wants you to know people you, you interact with. It says, by their fruits. Nobody just does business with anybody they meet on the street because they have a nice building. No. You want to check the culture of that company. You want to check the reputation of that company. I want to check the philosophy of that company. So that's how you do it. So check their lifestyle. What controls them? Why are they doing what they're doing? Matthew 7, verse 19 said, by their fruits, by their fruits, you can know them. So why are you doing what you're doing? Oh, I want to do this for my mom. Why? So I want to know, are they being controlled by social pressure? Are they being controlled by impressing people? Or do they have deeper convictions? Why they do what they do? And even when they have a wrong conviction, in the face of a higher conviction, in the face of a higher um, information, how do they react? You know, there are people that, even though they have a wrong thinking about something, when you present them with a higher, better way of doing the thing, or a higher way, better way of seeing something, you notice that they have seen that what you're saying is better, but they just don't want to agree. They want to hold their ground. You see, when you see things like that, those are the telltale signs. Every time I counsel people, I'm hearing people say, oh, my wife is stubborn. She has always been stubborn, but I like her like that. Then why are you in counseling now trying to change her stubbornness? You know, my husband has always been aggressive, has always been violent, has always been this. So you saw all these things, and now you want to change them suddenly. The best time to do these adjustments or to recognize these things is when you are in the courtship or relationship stage, when you still have an option. All right, so why are they doing what they're doing? That's what you need to find out. Are they living their lives based on insecurity, threat? You know, I cancel a couple sometimes. In dating stage, you will see so much threats. There will be, look, I will leave this. If you offend me, I will leave. And it's over. They break up every week. I don't know if I've seen people like that. They break up every week. Every threat. This, so that, that is showing you that this person has no issues with, with breaking up, with leaving. With, they, don't, they don't want to stay committed to something when it looks hard. They want a very, very easy life. So you can observe. There are so many areas I can cover that I don't have time for. But you can observe their lifestyle. Observe their habits. Why are you doing what you're doing? Did you go to church this weekend? And don't make it a big deal. Don't try to impose them to go to church. What you're checking is, how is their life with or without you? Because you know what? After the season of love, they will come back to their routine. So what you're looking for is their routine without you. Don't, don't, don't be the one, oh, you're making them go to church. And I see ladies tell me all the time, I've been forcing them to go to church. Look. Once you get married, when he settles down, he's going to go back to his routine. He's, he's doing, making adjustments now because he wants something. She's making adjustments now because she wants something. Once things are settled, people will return back to the normal. 
they will turn right back to the normal. So you need to know why have, has, has, has your conviction changed? This change, with or without me, will you, will you continue with this change? That's what you need to look out for. It was very easy for me to marry my wife, very easy for, you know, that's probably why we have stress-free, quarrel-free marriage, because on her own, I observed her life. I didn't try to first impose my ideology. Okay, so um, watch their actions, watch their behavior. By their fruits, you will know them. The things they're doing, what controls their information. Oh, um, um, I can't take that from that guy. Ask why. I can't wear this out. Why? Is it because, oh, people will look at me somehow. People that live for what other people think are in bondage. Because people, people's opinion will keep changing. You will keep adjusting to their opinion. Jesus Christ said, warn to you when all men speak well of you. You know, one of the ways to be free is to do what God says in spite of whether people like you or not. Because a lot of the things you need to do in life to, be, to do well, people will not like it. When I was going to do ministry, my parents didn't think it was a good idea. When God called me to come and be a pastor and do ministry, my parents didn't think it was a good idea. <laughs> but today, they are my biggest fans. You see what I'm saying? People change. So just because I, knew, I know how fickle people are. The same people that were shouting, Hosanna in the highest, Jesus, come and be our king. When tides were turned, they were the ones that were shouting, crucify him. So he said, I'm not going to depend on these people. I'm going to do what is right, no matter how, you know, these people take it. All right. So that's the first thing, um, checking out how they behave. All right. The second way you can know people is by their words, by their words, the things that they say. Like I said, it just seems listening is such an art. And for those of us that are counselors, it's a major cause in counseling. It's a major part of it, listening. What the other person is saying is always more important than what you have to say. What the other person is saying will always guide you in what you have to say. What the other person, so when I'm counseling people, I'm more interested in what they have to say. Because what they have to say reveals their thought patterns, reveals their convictions. You must learn the art of listening. What are people saying? If you want to know somebody better, they usually, if you make them comfortable enough, they usually give off. They usually give off enough signs by words for you to know what they believe in and what they don't believe in. So I'm always watching what people say. The Bible said in Matthew um, chapter 12, it said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What that means is that from what people are saying, you can see what fills their heart. So if you, if you are with someone and all they do is spend time talking bitterly and hatefully about their ex, their heart is full of bitterness. Very soon you'll be the next ex. They will be talking evil about to somebody else. If that's all they spend their time to do. If somebody spend their time criticizing other people, every time they come, they want to criticize their pastor, they want to criticize this celebrity, they want to criticize this person, they, they are just critical. Guess what? You will soon be the next target of their criticism. Watch what they are saying. But well, you see people that are happy for other people, you see people that share other people's testimony, that their heart is full of joy. Their heart is full of gratitude. So watch what people are saying. By their words, you can always know them. He said, out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart speaketh. The heart is always revealing what is in people's, uh, the mouth is always revealing what is in people's heart. So spend time to talk. Talk about random things. Talk about the important things. Ask important questions without imposing your idea. Very important. What some people do when they get into a relationship, they just want to tailor make that person or custom make that person into what they want. Say, hmm, I don't like people that talk like this. Use Queen's English all the time. Oh, you laugh this way. Laugh to the left, not to the right. That, that's not what you should do. Observe. Listen. Find out their own convictions by their words. What are they always saying? Always critical, always judgmental, always insulting, always gossiping. That is, a, is revealing to you who this person is. But you see some other people, you meet them, they're always um, constructive in their, in their talk, always trying to talk about ideas, talk about the future, talk about great things we can do, talk about great dreams and visions. Then you're, you're looking at a dreamer. You're looking at someone that you know, will make a good spouse. Ask them about what, what was their view on marriage. What's their view? Some people say, oh, I can't take it any more. I'll divorce this and this and the other. I don't see it. I mean, I've counseled couples that during dating, the person has told them that I don't see a big deal with divorce. They've already said it. So you know that they've already prophesied what's going to happen in the future. So watch out for those things. By their words, too. It's another good way to know people, the things that they say. Social media, too, is a good way. Why you see the comments they write? Those people that are trolls, they just go to people's pages to write evil things, to disagree. No matter what post goes on, their favorite word is, I disagree. <laughs> those, are, those are troublemakers. Those are, those are rioters. 
you know, you need to be careful of these people. Some people, um, you know, they are fighting in their own mind. The battle is really, you know, it's not even about you. It's, it's the battle in their own mind. Maybe they are fighting their parents' marriage. They are fighting their ex. Sometimes happened in their past. So they, are, they, are, they, they say they are now oh, uh, new age feminists, you know. So they, they reject everything. I don't need a man. I don't think a man is better than a woman. Or this and they just start arguing and fighting. You have seen the signs. You have seen the signs, all right? So watch out for those things. Or people that feel, if I don't marry you, I will die. Those are, you, you, you are not that powerful. Nobody is that important in another person's life. Anybody that is giving you those kind of threats, I've already told you that there's a lot of insecurity. You know, people think those things are love. Oh, I'll die without you. You know, that's high level insecurity. You will not die without me. I'm not oxygen. <laughs> I'm not oxygen. You will not die. All right? When people threaten you like that, that's insecurity. That's a big problem. All right? Very, very important. Um, my wife shot a video recently and we spoke about how that if we, we had an agreement throughout our dating period that if, that if at any point any one of us feels this should not go on, we are free to stop the relationship and break the relationship. We had that freedom. It was not, not a do or die. In relationship stage, that's not a do or die. It's a marriage that is do or die. We even said even if it's on the, on the wedding day, if for any reason you feel this is not it, please tell me and we'll, end it. we'll stop. That's the kind of liberty you need to enter a relationship. Okay? Very important. So watch out for threats. Watch out for words. Watch out for direction of their words. Very important. Um, number three. How do I know people better? Very simple. Who are their friends? Use any opportunity to meet their friends. When they invite you out, invite you to a wedding, invite you to a friend's party, good opportunity. Go there with your antenna up. <laughs> Go there with secret service. I mean, check his friends. When he said, this is, when he comes and says, oh, this is my very main friend. And the guy is a drunkard, the guy is a womanizer, the guy is abusive, the guy is a chauvinist, and all those things. That is a pointer to the ideology of that man you are with. Or oh, she takes you somewhere and shows, these are my best friends, and they are all naked. They are all what we call in my country, runs girls or slave queens, or these girls that build men, these girls that don't have a source of income, or at least, let me say, we can't see their source of income. There's income, their source of income, but we can't see it. <laughs> if those are, these, these, are, these are main chicks, <laughs> then you are seeing someone that their conviction for morality is low. Because, listen, at the important moments of our lives, our friends are the ones that will cast the vote. Our friends are the ones that we will we, we decide or we play a major role in our decision. Should I move forward? Should I move forward? When we call our friends, we'll see what happens. There's a, there's a story in the Bible of a guy called Amnon. And he, he had such incredible sexual passion for, for, his, for his sister, his, his stepsister. In those days, people could still marry their stepsisters. You know, he had such incredible passion, sexual passion for his stepsister. And he said he couldn't even know what to do. And he asked a friend. His life changed from that day. He asked a friend. And when he had the friend, this friend was a very sly, wicked guy. You know, the guy just said, you know what you're going to do? The guy gave him the strategy. He said, pretend you are sick. Tell your dad to tell your sister to, to bring food for you in the room because you're very sick. And once she comes and brings the room, lock the door and rape her. I mean, if his friend gave him that idea. And he actually did it. And their lives never remained the same. He was eventually murdered. Committed incest, rape. Mother, all that began up because of one friend's advice. So, when, so it's important you note the friends of this person that is interested in you. Because when he's about, about to marry, when both of you have a quarrel and he wants to react to that quarrel, he's going, he's going to consult this, this, this board of trustees. <laughs> These are the people he's going to consult and say, oh, see what she said. What are we going to do? And his friends will gather and say, give her a dirty slap. Or don't sleep at home this night. Or whatever it is, you know. Or when he's, he, you guys get married and you have little kids and he wants to stay out late and you're calling him to come back home, his friends will be like, oh, are you the only one that is married? Why are you rushing back home? Stay here and drink till 12 midnight. It's that kind of thing. So watch out, guys. Watch out. Who are their friends? The Bible said in Proverbs 13, verse 20, it says, um, he that walks with the wise shall be wise. He said, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. He said, he that walks with the wise shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. What are they saying? They're saying, look, your friends will play a major role in how your life turns out. Somebody that is very righteous in their thinking cannot keep company with wicked and unrighteous people continuously. No, after a while, they'll just, they'll just, they'll just drift apart. You know, you have to have 
some level of agreement with some people to hang out with them continuously for a long time. If not, you should, they should start irritating you after a while. All right? If all the person, your, 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 your husband is dating with that, all people that cheat on their spouses, get ready. Get ready. And I've, I've heard all kinds of things in these modern days. You know, there are guys that actually come together, pull funds together to rent a house where they bring girls to. So instead of only me, only one guy renting a house, he meets five or six of his friends. You see why friends are important. And they rent a house together and they all book slots. They have an administrative structure. <laughs> so they all book slots that I'm bringing my girls to. So they, so they, they just make sure they are using. They have a flat or a house they are using. You know, I discovered that sin and righteousness needs company and companionship. When people want to go to strip clubs and all that, they go with group. When people want to go and drink, when they go on a trip, where they'll take people, other girls that are not their wives. I, I, I've even heard of parties people organize, married men organize, that their wives can't come. I mean, I mean, I mean, how do you even, you know, have those kind of friends? Speaks a lot, speaks a lot. So watch out, watch out for, 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 for things like that, okay? Um, by their friends, you will know them, all right? By the kind of company they keep. Uh, they say beds of a feather flock together. It's, it's true, and it has always been true, all right? So watch out for his friends. Anytime he's inviting you out, be observant. Anytime he takes you somewhere, watch out for people he greets and what he says about these people, what he says about them, all right? Okay. Hey, North America, we're all packed and loaded, and we're heading your way. If you are in the United States of America or in Canada, we are coming to you in the year 2023. So, but hey, we need volunteers. We need people that will make this happen. We're having our tour and we need help. So hey, if you live in America or you live in Canada, go to the link in my bio or Pastor Mildred's bio and register to join the volunteer team and let's make this happen. All right, love that marriage. We want to cover as many cities and as many provinces as possible. So it doesn't matter where you stay. As long as you are inside the United States of America or you are in Canada, please register to join the volunteer team and let's make it happen. Let's make history. All right, see you. So before I share number four, hey, for those that are our supporters and love what we do and we've been a blessing to you, we now have Super Chat on our channel. This means you can support us directly. All right, you can just click the link. It's right there, Super Chat. Um, as you're watching this video, you can actually support um, this ministry and this page. All right, it goes a long way. It goes a long way in helping us do what we do all over the world. So hey, if you really love us and you want to support us, this is the time to do so. Thank you and God prosper your, your seed as you do that. All right, don't forget to subscribe and like and all that things too. Um, to this channel. Okay, so number four, dressing. <laughs> Check their dressing. People do not realize that you can actually know people a lot by how they dress. You see, your dressing usually is an expression of what's going on in your mind. Oh my, I, I, people don't know this. You can tell a lot about people by how they dress. Usually people that are very scattered in their dressing are scattered people. People are very neat and very, very organized, actually very organized people. Very, very neat. People are very dirty. All those things is speaking. All right, all those things speaking about what's going on in that person's mind. All right, you can tell a lot about people by how they dress. If you see people, and that's why, you know, um, go and check the people's social media handle. If she's always naked in her pictures, that's speaking something. Speaking number one, the kind of value she places on her body. The kind of value she places on her hus future husband's body. You see, when someone is single, they are, not, they are just single for now. Potentially, they belong to someone. So how you are using somebody's property, even before they arrive, shows a lot about you. If she's always naked, it shows how she values her body. It, it, there's, a, there's a sense of value. And listen, no matter how much fashion you want to tell me about, no matter how much uh, civilization you want to tell me about, have you noticed that president's wives don't dress a certain way? Queen of England, you know, God bless her soul, doesn't didn't dress in a certain way. Um, all these top women don't don't dress these ways. Have you noticed that? And, and these are these people are in countries where you know there's so much looseness. Oh, there's so much fashion. Use America for instance. Oh, I mean, you have uh, this 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 queen or that queen is naked and everything. But you notice that their first lady will dress properly. The queen will dress properly. The first lady of the state dresses properly. Have you noticed that? So it shows that people really know what is right. They're just making excuses. So when you see a lady always naked, always naked, all her pictures, she's showing the cleavage, showing her butt, showing her ties. Everything is always open. 
is a sense of value of her of, of what she and and and, and they are also thirsty. Um, they are they are also looking for attention. They are crazy about attention. What what does that mean? When somebody is crazy about attention, it means a time will come beyond your attention. They will still seek. You know, attention is addictive. When, when you see many people clapping for you, liking your post, this, this this is a trap a lot of young children, young people are in today. You do one post, you open one part of your your cleavage, and you see the likes grow. Because there are a lot of honey men out there, whoremongers. The Bible calls them whoremongers. You know, these are people that are looking for whores. So they are whoremongers. They like your post, so you're happy. So what, if you want another uh, like tomorrow, you're not going to open just one part of your cleavage. You open the other side. Then they like it more, and you want more. What will you do? You will remove the whole, the whole top. That's how it goes. It's a trap. It's a trap. So you see those ladies that twerk, and now they must continue twerking till they die. <laughs> it's addiction. They will twerk. They will be pregnant. They will twerk. The children they will twerk. The children will be on the back. They will twerk. The children will wake up twerk. The family will be a twerking family because it's a trap. Because they want that attention. So those things look. I know to to to, to some kind of people and and, and and a pastor and this is a Christian uh, backed page. So if you don't understand, what I'm saying don't you, thank you. But for those that don't understand, what I'm saying it's a trap. Once you get into that trap and you continue that twerking, even their husbands sometimes they they know they are competing with. So much, but they, because maybe she's bringing money by her twerking, you know. And the Bible said the love of money is the root of evil. When people love money so much, they can't say the truth anymore. Even their parents can't even correct them because they are getting money from their nakedness. My dear, you can know people a lot about people by their dressing. You can know a lot of about people by their dressing. Always naked shows the value you put on your on your body, and you see our bodies are the temple. Is a temple of the living God. That's what the Bible says. The Bible talks about moderation and all things. So for a born-again Christian, there are some standards expected of us. I know this part of this video might not apply to just everybody, so I get that. But what I'm still telling you is still right anyway, no matter who you are. But for us as believers, there are standards we have before God. All right, so there's a way you should dress. There's a way, so watch out for that dressing. It speaks a lot. The Bible says something, it calls something the attire of an harlot. In Proverbs chapter 7, all right, Proverbs chapter 7, verse 10 or thereabout, it says there's a woman that they saw on the street. She was wearing an attire of a harlot. They didn't say she was a harlot, but they said she wore the uniform. She wore the clothing of a harlot. So universally, we all know that harlots have a dress code. I don't know about you. If you have traveled around the world, you will see the harlots everywhere in the world have a dress code. They have a dress code. I've not seen a harlot in, 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 in overall gowns covering her head to toe. I've never seen that. All the harlots we see are wearing very slim skirt or not wearing skirt at all. <laughs> That's what we see. All the harlots are exposing their, 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 their boobs. I've not seen a harlot fully clothed, even in, 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 in winter. <laughs> so there's, a, there's a, what the Bible calls the attire of an harlot. And that's what girls wear today on social media and posts, and men are liking it. Yeah, attention seeking is largely based on insecurity. And people that are attention hungry, ah, uh, you know, you, it's something you can't satisfy. One person can You see, you're, you're used to getting attention of 3,000 men. Some people, 30,000 men. Some people, 300,000 men. Then you want to marry one man. Permit the grammar. <laughs> you want to marry one man. That you're one man in the house. His attention will never satisfy you. Your husband's attention will never satisfy you. Because you have 3,000 men out there. Feeding you attention. And attention can be addictive. Trust me, can be addictive. This is why people live on social media. Attention. All right? So they are tired. Watch their dressing. Watch how she dresses. She does she always dress to catch attention? Always dress to expose. And this also applies to guys. I mean, just, I'm just using women as an example. But it applies to guys. So I know some people always jump on every post and say, what of men, what of men? Calm down. Not competition. But this applies to men also. There's some men that always dress to impress, always, and, and I don't mean impress in a positive way, but they always dress to, to also, you know, attract members of the opposite sex. They always dress to, you know, uh, uh, portray only their body. You see, as a human being, you have three parts to spirit, soul, and body. So you can't always just live your life just to push only one side of, your, of, of, of who you are as your being. It shows something is wrong on the other two sides. All right? Uh, there are some men that always wear muscle tops, always, just to show their bulging arms and chest, because they want, they want girls to say, ooh, ooh. They want, they look. <laughs> so everywhere they go, everywhere, everything is tight. They can't wear normal clothing. Everything must be tight to show. I remember those days when we were very young, um, when, I, when I started out, 
as, as, a, as a young preacher and uh, marriage coach and all that. This was more than 20 years ago, interestingly. So one of, one of my guy, uh, ladies in our church came and said, oh, Pastor, there's this guy interested in me, seems he wants to marry me and all that, all that. Oh, I said, great, can I meet him? And the guy came. The first day he came was wearing muscle top. All his chest was showing. <laughs> all his arms. Okay, hey, it's just one day. It doesn't mean anything. So I shook his hand, get to meet him. Saw him the next week. Guess what I was wearing, guys? Muscle top. Everywhere showing. That's okay. And this guy is not a muscle builder. He's not a gym instructor. Nothing. Just a regular guy. <laughs> Third day, met him. Guess what I was wearing, guys? You guessed right. Muscle top. Everywhere. Then some days I ran into him on different places, not even in church. Maybe met him on the road with other people or whatever. Same thing I was wearing. So I called that girl and said, something's wrong. This guy is constantly in muscle tops trying to get attention. So I'm truly for long found out that he had many girls. He was, you know, the, the, the signs are there. You see, for those that are not informed or skilled, these things look like chance. But for those four of us that know this thing, you can tell a lot about people looking at how they dress. You can tell a lot about them. People that are broke and always dressing more than they can afford. I don't know if you've seen that one too. Woo-hoo! Always wearing designers. And you know, this person does not have a job. Has no job. But always in designers. You see, that's someone that will steal. That's someone that will steal because they have taste that their pocket can meet. As, as young children, our parents taught us that one. You will steal. Once your eyes are going for something, <laughs> your pocket can never reach. You are going to steal now. You know, you're always interested in, oh, high taste, but you don't have high capacity to work. It's not going to work. You're going to steal. You're going to lie. You're going to sleep around to get paid to buy a new bag. Because it's when you don't have a bag that you don't know this secret. When you have one expensive bag, you suddenly realize you can't have only one expensive bag. <laughs> That's what poor people don't know. See, you that don't have money, manage your shoe, nobody cares. The day you go and buy one expensive shoe, big problem. You now find that you can't wear your old trouser with it. <laughs> then if this shoe is this quality, it's not any trouser you need. There's a trouser that must match. The way you buy that trouser, after that, it's not just any belt. You can't wear this old belt with this trouser. Then you go and buy this other belt. In fact, you can't wear another shirt. Then you buy this shirt. Then you buy the complete uniform with your whole life saving. You now find out you can't wear this thing again next week. <laughs> you see why if a poor person stay your lane, stay at your level and be growing gradually. When you jump up, you come down. When you grow up, you stay up. <laughs> Did you get that? When you jump up, you will come down. When you grow up, you will stay up. So grow up. You go and buy one designer shoe. What bag are you going to wear with this shoe? Which bag are you going to wear with this shoe? Then you buy the bag that you wear with this shoe. Then, next week, are you going to wear the same bag and shoe? You have already set a standard. People have seen the bag you brought. Everybody's not looking forward. They are already telling you, hey, I can't wait to see the bag you bring. You go and steal. It's still in there. You will carry gun. Last, last. <laughs> to keep up. Hmm? This is why some girls are perpetually into hookups. The culture in my own country is crazy now. The average girl is into hookups. It's a career. They don't even see it as a problem. It's a proper field of endeavor now. They're into hookup. Sleeping with men, they don't know, just discuss fun, money. They have pimp, middleman that arranges it, and they just go to meet a stranger. I mean, a lot of them are even killed and sacrificed for rituals. And they are still going. Because what? Why? They say, eh, my parents, it's not your parents. It's that you, want to, you, want to have a, you want to meet a taste that you put on yourself. All right? I've even left talking about clothes now, talking about on that thing. But <laughs> you get the message, guys. All right? By people's dressing. If they're always dressing above what they can afford, you know that they, they're going to look for money in weird ways. Because they're not patient to work for it. All right? So um, you can know a lot about people. Their financial lifestyle, their sense of reasoning, you know, they're borrowing money to buy clothes, expensive clothes. Those are, those are telltale ways you're going to run into financial crisis. All right? So number five, if you want to know people better, hmm, pray. Pray. Um, for those of you that are Christians, this should, be, this, should be, this should be a no-brainer. This should go without saying. Pray. When you meet someone and you notice this person is getting interested in me or I am getting interested in this person, one of the things you must do immediately is to begin to pray. I say, Lord, hey, um, what do I need to know about this person? Lord, if there's something I need to know about this person, reveal it to me. Oh, that's very important. That will save you years. What happens to a lot of people that because they don't take time to know people, they are dating two years to find out the person then, break up, start that two years. Before you know you are too old. You're wasting two years on each relationship. You know, you can get it right the first time. I said all the time, my wife was the first person I ever dated as an adult, as an a Christian. First relationship. In fact, all my life, self, because all the time we're doing primary school is not love. You know, primary school, where you write notes to somebody, you know, you think you're in a relationship. 
No, that is not love. Not relationship. So, 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 so I don't know why people need to do trial lock. I don't even know why. You need to pray. It's very important to pray. How to know people better is to pray. Because some people want to pretend. They want to deceive. But when you pray, God has a way of opening your eyes to see things about those people. So pray. Pray. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5, it said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. He said, In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. He said, don't lean on your understanding. Don't say, ah, I know how to pick a fine girl. Oh, I know how to, when I was, when I was not born again, I, was, I dated a lot of cool girls. When I was not born again, I dated a lot of cool guys. I know how to find the right guy. No, 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 no. Ah, life is deeper than that. Trust me. Life is deeper than that. So always put God first. He said, don't lean on your own understanding. They didn't say you don't have understanding. He said, don't lean on it. He said, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So, Ask God, hey God, this man, I like him, but I want to ask your opinion. And, and don't wait till you're already deeply in love. Don't wait till you guys have agreed to have fixed wedding dates and you've started uh, applying for traditional wedding. That's not what I'm saying. You do these prayers ahead of time so that you won't even get to that stage. Because many people, God has not shown them the thing, but date, wedding dates has been fixed and they don't know how to tell people not to come. So they're finding hard to break up. No, no, no. You do all this praying at the beginning stages before you even start anything serious with this person. You are saying, Lord, if there's things I need to see, reveal it to me. That's one of the most powerful prayers you can pray. Because God will just open your eyes suddenly, in an unexpected way. Something will just happen. That will, I mean, I've seen people marry people that were married before. I mean, they had another family somewhere. Or people that are killers or whatever. You know, serious stuff that the person kept from them throughout the dating stage. Because they, 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 just, they were just enjoying life. No, no, no. When you pray like that, God opens your spiritual eyes. God makes incidences to happen. Somebody will call him at the wrong time. Somebody will send a message while you are checking the picture on the, or you're about to snap the picture with his phone. A message will come in. Something strange is going to happen that will reveal to you if this is what you should go about or if you should, something you should ask him or her. Something is going to happen. But, so pray. You know, I always acknowledge him. Pray. All right? Very, very important. Um, when, when I was younger days, when I was a counselor, in my younger days of being a counselor, um, I, I, used to, I used to be very, very, oh, adamant. When people want to do, make a mistake relationship, I show them the points and I'm adamant and they don't agree, we argue a lot. But nowadays, I've learned and I don't do that anymore. When, when there's a clear red flag and somebody's not seen it, all I do for them is just pray that prayer for them. I say, don't worry. Don't worry. I just hold their hands and pray. Or sometimes I don't even pray in their presence. I go home and I pray, say, Lord, open this person's eyes to see what we are seeing. Because sometimes every other person has seen that problem. It's when you divorce, people now say, ah, we knew. You didn't know he was drinking. You didn't know he was cheating. You didn't know he was a drunkard. You didn't know he was a know You didn't know he was a kidnapper. You find out when you are divorced that everybody knew. You were just the one blind. So sometimes when I go home, I just go and pray to the Lord, open this person's eyes to see what all of us are seeing. And you see, for one week, two weeks, person come and say, Pastor, ah, you won't believe. That man used to, do. I said, I knew. We all knew. You were just too blind. So we had to pray for you for God to open your eyes. So I got more results that way. Praying for people to their eyes to be open than trying to talk to them. Sometimes when people, their, their hearts is so fixed on this thing, no amount of talking will get them out of it except their eyes open. Or some things happen in that relationship that makes it impossible for them to move ahead. Then they will not come to agree. All right? So um, pray is a, praying is a major part how you know people better. Number six, <laughs> all right, how to know people better is check their relationship with other people. Very important. Check their relationship with other people. Calmly and supportively ask them how their relationship with their ex was. And pay attention to the things, not just the things that are said, but to the things that are not said. Pay attention. Hey, how was the relationship with your dad, with your mom? And pay attention. You know people by how they relate with other people. Find out, see, check how they relate with their authority figures. How is your pastor? If you don't mind that fool. <laughs> That's a killer. It's a hired killer. <laughs> because you have no, no reverence for authorities. How's your boss? You know, how is, how is, you know, how is how your parents? You're checking how they relate with authority figures. You're checking how they relate with their friends. You're checking how they relate with their siblings. See, if someone is fighting everyone, fighting his parents, fighting his siblings, fighting his pastor, fighting his boss, fighting everybody, trust me, it's not a coincidence. They are fighters. They will always fight. So be careful of that. Be careful of that. Shared the story so many times. One of one guy is very dear to my heart, peaceful, loving guy. 
wanted to marry one girl well, trying to signal him, don't marry her, don't marry her. She was a fighter. She and and, and I think something happened in her childhood or something, or her, just her attitude. But she's a fighter, and I, I don't even think she's an evil person. She's just a wounded person, you know, fighter. So she was fighting her parents, fighting her boss, fighting her elder brother, fighting me, the pastor, fighting everybody. And this other guy was too gentle. We're trying to signal him, you can't marry this girl. The girl fought everybody in church and left church. So you can't marry this girl. He went to carry her, bring her, marry her and bring her back to church. Before long, he started fighting because when we go out together, she will make trouble, she will fight. He has to defend her. So she started, he started fighting. Gentle guy, he started fighting. Before long, they started fighting each other. And by the time they were divorced, but the marriage didn't last um, up to two, three years, I can't remember, or four years. He even told me in his own testimony that the reason why it even lasted that long was because they were trying to prove me wrong, that it had broken from the first year, that they just tried to keep together because they didn't want it to look like they warned us, and now we are truly divorced. <laughs> but after some years, they couldn't take it because the fighting was too much. She was just a fighter. She told me that there are times they almost threw her from the balcony because the fight was too much. There were times they were driving on the highway and they would park their car. This was his own testimony. So it's not that somebody told me, he told me, that they would park the car, come down and fight. <laughs> because fighters fight. That's what they do. All right, so watch how they relate with other people. Not just you. Some people can be nice to you, but they are mean to every other person. Oh, that's a bad sign. That's a bad sign. One day you'll be that other person. They are very mean. Very harsh. Check how they are relating to people that are nice. Check how they are relating to people that are under them. Not just people above them. People that are under them. See how they talk to the house help. Look how they talk to the driver. Look how they talk to, 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 the, to the hawker on the street. The, the, the sales girl. The sales attendant. Just see how they behave with other people. That will tell you their true character. So be observant. Watch their behavior with other people. Some people have no boundaries. They hug every girl, carry the girl on their head, they hug and carry on their lap. Woo! Oh, she's a girl and she hugs everybody with her full chest, if you know what I mean. You know? You see that no boundaries. There's a boundary problem. There's a boundary problem. The way it's relating with other people's wives or other people's husbands, boundary problem. Check out their behavior with other people. Check out their behavior. Yeah. Are they respectful? to people that don't owe them anything, to people that can't do anything for them. You know, everybody's nice to who pays their salary. Everybody's nice to who can do something for them. I'm talking about people that can't do anything for them. Check how they behave. Are they nice or courteous normally? Or are they brash, abusive? You know, they, 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 they're not going to treat you special forever. So you need to know their character when you're not there. And before I share number seven, uh, don't forget, um, you can use our super chat to support what we do. Um, it goes a long way when we get support from people like you. So, hey, if you love us and if our videos bless you, use the Super Chat right now while you're watching the video. Use the Super Chat to support what we do. We appreciate it greatly. And don't forget, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe, like, and share this video. All right, number seven. Hmm. And I would like to hear from you in the comment section if any of these things make sense to you, if you have experienced any of these things or had any relationship, any uh, you know, encounter with things like this. So I would like to hear. I'd like to hear. So number seven, how to not do better is by one of the most famous four letter words. Time. Give it time. T-I-M-E. Time. Time is the master of deception. Time is the master of deception. Nobody can deceive you forever. All right? People can pretend for a short time, but most people can't pretend forever. So the mistake many people make is that they move from hello to I do. They move from hi to I love you. No, give the relationship time. That talking stage that this young generation don't like to <laughs> have. They just want to move from I love you, we find girl, let's date. This is why many of you have exes, 30 exes, 60 exes. Why? Jumping in and out of relationships. And what you don't realize is that every relationship impacts you. Every. So don't jump, don't, treat, don't use yourself that way. Give it time. Oh, hello, how are you? Meet them, talk. Just spend time, just talk. Let's just talk. Time has a way of forcing out people's real intention. Time has a way of doing that. All right, so if you spend time enough with them, go on dates. When I mean dates, you're not, you're not necessarily dating. Don't, don't jump into dating. Go on dates, go and have lunch. <laughs> time, you see how they eat. You see how they eat. Anybody that eat their meat first before their food. 
I'm joking. That has nothing to do. With, <laughs> that has nothing to do with anything. But <laughs> on a serious note, you know, you you see things. You see, and and that's why um, most powerful deals are made over lunch or dinner or whatever. Because when people eat, they are a bit relaxed. It's difficult to be uptight when you are eating. If you eat something you like and it's a it's a good meal, you you can't be uptight for long. Before you know it, you relax. They will talk. All right, and you'll be watching. Okay, so give it time. Don't rush from, we meet on Monday, we must date by Friday, and we must marry by Wednesday. No, nah. give it time. Nobody says you need to agree to dating someone because you've been speaking for two weeks. No, give it time. Time is the master of deception. The Bible says it's not the first person that brings a case. I think in Proverbs 25 or something. You know, it's not the first person that brings a case that is right. When you need to hear from that person, all this means is that allow time to pass. Allow time to pass. All right, it makes all things beautiful in this time. There's a time to hug. There's a time to refrain from hugging. Because that's in chapter 3. All they're just trying to say is that, look, allow time. Time plays its own major, major, major role. All right, time plays its role. If you spend enough time with people, before long, you start knowing how they think, what they believe in, and what they would like to do. All right, and the pretense will vanish away with time. So, give your relationships time. People ask me the time. Um... How long should cutting or dating before, be before marriage and all that? Um, it's not fixed, but usually I say anywhere from six months to two years, depending on how long you have known each other before the relationship. If you're just meeting for the first time, I suggest you give it some time before you actually move into marriage. If you've known each other all your lives, oh, then you can date for a shorter time. All right? But it's not fixed. Um, and don't be afraid to consult with a counselor. All right? The counselor can hear the full story and help you make a better judgment. All right? Um, we, we also have counseling services, all right? I see this company, a lot of young people don't value counseling. Look, it will save your life. That's what the Bible says, that in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. It will literally save your life, all right? So don't be hesitant to consult um, a counselor. There are many good ones all over the world. We also provide counseling services, whether premarital, postmarital, or just clarity sessions. You just want to talk to somebody about some things in your heart or, you know, the person in your life. Uh, please consult us. The numbers and details are on the screen. Reach out to us. I have loads and loads of trained counselors that work with me as a team. So um, you get affordable rates and they're always available to be a blessing to you. So take advantage of it. All right. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe and share it with someone. It will bless someone that you know. All right. God bless you. See you later.